Good morning, all. Welcome to Monday. It's July 27th. And uh, we'll see here in just a second how many people have already joined in. Five people already. Carrie is right there. Thank you. And I'm seeing that we got problems with the focus already. Hmm. All right. Kip Horvath, good morning. Joan Riggs and Norma Bentley, good morning. Janet Lyons, good morning. And Judy Sutherland, hello. Joan Riggs is with us and Norma Bentley. Ken Woods, good morning. Barry and Margot, good morning. Tracy is with us. Lizette St. Germain is with us. Barbara Wolf, good morning. Judy Martin. Larry and Carolyn Thomas is with us. Nancy Horvarth is with us. Judy Hatch. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a hot and steamy morning here in Michigan. I don't think it got... Uh, John Dam is with us. Good morning, Jan, Doc, John. And Jeannie Mathis. Jeannie's talking, says that it was a beautiful service yesterday. Yeah, the Thrive Band was great. They were wonderful and um, really enjoyed having uh, them there, and they will continue to be back. The sound is uh, something that we continue to work with, and of course our technical upgrades that we're in the process of doing, and again, if you'd like to donate to that, that would be very welcome. Uh, but uh, they're well on the, the way to getting there, and um, one of the things that we're going to be able to do when those things are in and installed is that when we do have the Thrive Band or perhaps uh, other musical people, um, they're going to have the ability to adjust their sound levels um, right there. Um, so, of course, we'll be able to do it, um, and, uh, and uh, they'll be able to do that themselves. So we know that the bass was a little bit low yesterday, apparently, so that will be uh, rectified. So we look forward to that. Scott Johnson, good morning. Nancy Sparks, hope everything's going well with you. Amy Bowerman, good morning, Amy. She was part of that Thrive Band yesterday and did such a good job. And uh, great music, wasn't it? We did, um, we did. Uh, they did. Uh, if I had a hammer, uh, that wonderful Pete Seeger um, tune that has been done not only by himself but also by Peter Paul and Mary and many other people. Kind of a classic protest song out of the 60s, but um, and, and I know a lot of us grew up in that time frame, so we remember that. Antoinette Delinsky, good morning. Robin uh, Furzo is with us, good morning. All right. We, um, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try something. Just this. Uh, my iPad seems to be having some problems with this. So like right now it's frozen on me. And, uh, but we'll get through it. Maybe the thing to do is I should just use my iPhone. Maybe that would be better. All right. There. It's, it froze out of focus and now it came back into focus. So it is. It's a day that uh, it's going to be hot up in the 90s again. So please, 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 please everyone, please be careful. Uh, limit your stuff that you do outside. It's going to be very humid. Uh, Carol Ann Johnson, good morning. And Paul Wolf, good morning. And uh, there it is. It's, I'm, going to, I'm going to flip this around, okay? So just bear with me for just a second. I don't know how that worked. So, Carrie is doing all sorts of wonderful uh, announcements here. Sign up for online Camp Wakanda. Walk Camp Wakanda uh, uh, online. There it is, right there. It is uh, something for everybody, not only, not only uh, youth, but also 
especially in the afternoon evening sessions there's going to be a lot of traditions of camp including uh, Clue. I'm going to play Clue virtually and uh, hey my uncle my uncle Dick is online here good morning good morning all right our um, um, devotions today obviously it's we're gonna we continue in prayer and uh, we we need we have a lot of folks that we need to continue to pray with and for so um, the um, we're praying for Sherry Keys and her family Joan Riggs Carrie's mom uh, Sherry's mom um, she still is continues to be in the hospital and um, in recovery from that and it's still a tender tender time so we are praying for wonderful outcomes not a whole lot of information at this point other than there's been some very positive uh, things that as she's they've been able to work with her so uh, movements and things like that so we're very very hopeful and praying and uh, with confidence we're praying with confidence of course our prayers continue to go out to uh, Ellen Byron's on the loss of her daughter Margaret and um, we continue to pray for the Winslow family uh, for Rudy um, and um, her, his mom Ann so those are people there's a lot more um, people that we need to pray for and with but those are ones that are on the on the top of uh, our minds right now you might have some others and uh, the uh, so why don't we move ahead and let me get over here to our daily readings it's July 27th and again we're working with the revised common lectionary which is the um, that's the common readings that are used throughout the year throughout the church year by almost all churches um, and we, oh, don't know what that was for, but we'll deal with it later. All right. Um, our morning psalm. We have two psalms that we read in the morning. The first one that we're going to read here is Psalm 57. So let's listen now for the word of the Lord. Deep breath. It's a beautiful day, and we're going to make the most of it. Let's start by soaking in God's word and then opening ourselves to the Holy Spirit so that we might react to the things that we come across this year in a very, in, uh, according to God's will. All right, here we go. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample on me. Selah. God will send forth his steadfast love and faithfulness. I lie down among lions that greedily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows. Their tongues sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. Selah. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations, for your steadfast love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. It's the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. And our second psalm is Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your, laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed. I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. 
All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are, are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and give you them the f their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desires of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love them, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. And our Old Testament uh, lesson today is from, uh, we're continuing in the book of Joshua. It's the 24th chapter, verses 16 through 33. Now this is Joshua, who has led the people across the Jordan River. And uh, they are making their mark in the promised land. But remember, there's people that are there already. So we have uh, been reading the stories of uh, not only the military defeats of the people who were there, who were opposing them, but also how they got along uh, with some of the people that were there. So this is, uh, this is Joshua speaking to his own people. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did these great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the people, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God will serve, and we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone and set it there under the oak in the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, See, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore it shall be a witness against you, if you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away to their inheritances. After these things, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. They buried him in his own inheritance at uh, Temetha Sarah, which is in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gesh. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua had known all the work that the Lord did for Israel. The bones of Joseph, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem, in the portion of ground that Jacob had brought, bought from the children of Hamar, the father of Shechem for 100 pieces of money. It became an inheritance of the descendants of Joseph. Elizar, son of Aaron, died, and they buried him at Gebeth, the town of his son Phinehas, which had been given him in the hill country of Ephraim. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. So we are starting to see the history of uh, the, the nation of Israel. Um, the Moses, of course, uh, led the people and then did not was not able to come across um, and passed before they came across the Jordan River. And then Joshua led them uh, in there. And then this was, so most of the, um, most of the 
the towns and the villages that they lived, uh, again, they weren't camped together. They spread out quite a bit, the people of Israel. So uh, Shechem became the center of Jewish activity at that point. Now later it became Jerusalem, but it was Shechem at first. And um, so this is how the word of God and the ordinances of the covenant are passed on from generation to generation. And although we've read many, many chapters out of, out of Joshua that describe specific instances, all of a sudden now it jumps several generations outside of that. It says the elders who were there with Joshua, that uh, they continued to rule righteously and then, um, and then they passed. We talk about the linkages to the past because Joseph was certainly in Egypt long before Moses came along, but saying how that they reclaimed his bones from Egypt and brought him up and buried his bones there in Shechem so that they can have a continuum of the knowledge of, uh, of not only their heritage, but also their inheritance. So the inheritance that, uh, that God has given the, is the, the nation of Israel is the land. And we've talked about blessings and curses and the importance that they needed to not uh, take up false gods. And that was really important at the time because, as I said, there's people that were living in the land. And the archaeology tells us that um, it wasn't this great military conquest that drove all the people out, although the, the scripture today would have us believe that because of the Amorites uh, being vanquished. But there was a number of other tribes. And the archaeological, it, um, archaeological evidence indicates that it was a slow, it was a slow um, movement of the people throughout the nation of Israel and that it wasn't military conquest necessarily but that it was a lot of intermingling of the people that were already there. So they had their own religions. So the danger was is that they would weaken um, the, their own religion by taking up traditions and beliefs of some of the other ones and intermingling them. So this was uh, the biggest concern. The biggest concern uh, was that that would happen. And uh, we do have evidence that it did happen. But uh, the, the warning was, don't do that because you can live under God's grace as long as you keep your focus and faith and belief only in God. But if you start to believe in other gods, um, that that is a, an unfaithful act against God. All right. So I don't know where we're going with that tomorrow. I haven't looked ahead, so we'll see where that goes. Our second reading, uh, our, our next reading is out of the New Testament, and this is again out of the book of Romans. We've stayed here, and if you watched on Sunday, you saw that we read out of uh, chapter 8 of Romans, and this is out of chapter 16. It's verses 1 through 16. And remember Paul, to put this in context, Paul is writing this to the Church of Rome because he has felt that he has um, done all he can uh, or all he sh was supposed to be doing and what is current day Greek, uh, Greece and Turkey and is now wanting to move further westward uh, to what is now modern day Spain. Um, but he needed a place that uh, would supply him and support him and he was looking at Rome. That was the next, that was the next major city to the west before you get to Spain. Um, so he has introduced himself uh, to them and also what we read on Thursday was his request that they do support him. So uh, he's continuing on and, uh, and now he's, uh, um, you'll see that he's, he's uh, basically uh, uh, reaffirming his uh, common bonds that he has with the church in Rome, which he's never been to before. Let's listen now and hear what he has to say. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church of Sintra, uh, I'm sorry, so that you may welcome her in the Lord as is fitting for the saints and help her in whatever she may require from you. For she has been a benefactor of many and myself as well. Greet Pris uh, Prisca and Aquila who, works, uh, who work with me in Christ Jesus and who risk their necks for my life to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my friend Epimetheus, who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard among you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives who were in prison with me. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet uh, 
Amplitus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my beloved Statius. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Astrobulus. Greet my relative Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Tryphinia and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and greet his mother, a mother to me also. Greet Ancritius, Phlygian, Hermes, Patrobas, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who are with them. Greet Philodoc, uh, Philogus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. So ends this reading of God's word for us. So a lot of difficult uh, names there as we go through. Um, this is Paul opening up the floodgates saying, hey, uh, I've talked about myself, but here's all these people that work with me and uh, that uh, you not only meet me, but you're going to meet them. And here they are. So greet them and uh, greet them as brothers and sisters in Christ. So we can see that Paul, uh, although we like to think of a Paul as an as a, as a independent person who was just out and doing this thing, he was really more of a, a bishop administrator and the fact that uh, and all of these uh, people represent churches that were in what he calls Asia, Asia Minor, which is Greece and Turkey, um, and the fact that it's heavily influenced um, or it's heavily a reach out to Gentiles, people of non-Jewish faith. So, which we know that there was a significant proportion of those people in Rome, too. So, he's uh, he's kind of laying it all out. Here it is. It's uh, he's not he's not a fly by night operation. He comes he comes with a with a whole crew of people. All right, our gospel reading uh, is uh, Matthew twenty seven, and this is the events of uh, Good Friday that we continue to read about, and it's verses twenty four through thirty one. Jesus is on trial. Uh, he has been um, brought before Caiaphas uh, and then Herod, and he's been sent on to the Roman governor, Pilate. And remember, this is Passover, so there was many, many people coming into Jerusalem. And the Roman, the Romans were most concerned that there not be any, uh, any rioting, that there not be any problems. So um, knowing that, the... the Caiaphas, the chief priest, and all the temple administrators knew that uh, if they took him to Pilate, that they could probably get their way with him and get him killed because Pilate was trying to keep the peace. So let's listen to see what God has to say to us today here. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See it to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and our children. So he released Barabbas, uh, Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thrones, uh, thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on their head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Kind of unusual to be reading this, um, reading this uh, at this time, but... Um, the uh, you know this is this is the last days of our Lord Jesus Christ as is told to us by Matthew, and we can see that um, it was it was a conspiracy against Christ, and uh, he represented a problem to a lot of people. Um, I've always uh, enjoyed um, the the context of this is saying that Pilate. Um, you know, he said, I don't have any case against this guy. Uh, this is something that you guys have to work through. And they said, no, this is it. So he said, well, what do you want? Uh, you know, he says, I, I can release one prisoner. And they asked that another prisoner be released, not Christ. 
And then he said, well, what am I supposed to do with him? And they just yelled, crucify, crucify. So he washes his hands of it. He said, this is your, this is, this is on you. Although he didn't step in and stop it. And so then we can see that the Roman soldiers, um, that they were really, really a, a tough, a tough cohort when they talk about them is that they came in and they said, all right, if we're going to do this, we're going to really do this. And so they, they stripped Jesus of his clothes and they put on a royal, a royal scarlet robe on him and they make him a crown of thorns. And um, they, they sarcastically, um, you know, hail him. And then they beat him. And then they beat him. So we're continuing on with that. And uh, I think uh, I'm looking here and I'm seeing that it's still coming out of focus. So I do apologize for that. I'm going to stop using this iPad for this because I thought that I had that problem solved. But we'll see we don't. All right, I'm looking very quickly here. <laughs> Carrie says, glad I didn't have to read that scripture. Yeah, a lot of names. Uh, well, here's the thing. Somebody says, great job. Barbara says, great job about pronouncing them. This is what I tell everybody if they're lay readers and they have some difficult names or, or names of cities. Um, you just don't stop, right? Just Go ahead and say it, and then you just have to make sure that if it shows up again, you say it the same way, and nobody will ever know. Nobody will ever know that. All right. Good morning, Ann. Welcome. Norma Bentley is, is with us, too. All right. So um, why don't we pray? We're going to start this day, and, and friends, this can be a great day. We just have to live it into the Lord, and we have to take all of our faith and all of our belief, and we need to focus in on the things that are most important. And those things aren't the small things in life, it's the big things in life. So we need to pray for the relationships that we want to have continue to expand and be good, and then, and, and we need to pray for healing, right? For everyone who is, who is hurting at this time that wants wholeness, um, and that we need to trust God that whatever whatever the outcome here is that God is here with us. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we pray fervently. And uh, you know before we even ask the things that are on our hearts. And when we pray, we're just uh, coming to you and we're laying those things out because we're asking that we might have comfort and that we also might be led to, to uh, godly actions that can influence outcomes. And Lord, but we also know that all things are in, your, are in your stead and that we can't understand. And sometimes the things that we want so desperately are things that are not to be. But Lord, we pray here for things that we've been told that you will freely grant. So we just ask. We ask for peace. We ask for comfort. We ask for healing wherever it's possible. And then, Lord, uh, we just ask that you accompany us through all of our days. Let us not pick up false gods. We can put many things in between you and us. We can put wealth. We can put comfort. We can put our relationship or what others think of us. And let us know that you made us whole, and especially in what you did in Jesus Christ. So we need to know that even when we think we're weak, that we're strong. And, Lord, that when we think that we're alone, we have you. So we just ask that you be with us today. Guide us on this day that you've made. And we ask all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, friends. And remember, um, uh, sign up. Sign yourselves up, your families up, your ne nieces, nephews, grandkids, sons, daughters. Sign them up for Camp Wakanda. And uh, we should have a great time. So. Uh, God bless you all, and uh, we, uh, we are going to uh, take some pictures and put them up of uh, what we've been doing in the sanctuary with our new audiovisual system that's starting to, to really take shape. It's not ready yet, and, uh, and uh, I know everybody who's dying, not dying, I'm sorry, that's a bad word. Everybody would be is very anxious to when we might be able to get back together again. We can't do that yet, but... We certainly see that there, there are some things that are pointing in that direction, so we pray for that too. All right. God bless you all, and I uh, love you all, and we'll see you tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m. Oh, and Wednesday we have our Bible study. So we are going to do it on Wednesday at 7 p.m., so look uh, for the Zoom call information. Of course, we'll push that to Facebook Live too. 
We're going to talk about David. We're going to spend probably quite a bit of time talking about David, about who he was, where he came from, uh, how he came to power, and uh, the way that God blessed him, and most importantly, how uh, that the fact that he wasn't perfect, that there was some character faults that he had, uh, but yet God still used him uh, strongly. So, uh, and that means that we're also going to talk about a little bit of kings uh, and the focus that they had and, and, um, and how uh, the Bible treats kings. And, so, and we'll also have to talk about prophets because prophets and kings go together with Israel. All right, God bless you all. Love you and see you later. Bye-bye.